All right, in that last demo, everything went uh, smoothly, and I was able to download a bunch of pages in parallel. And because things were going smoothly and I didn't have any bugs, um, using the parallel map felt pretty much the same as using um, the regular map. It just felt like a faster version of that. Um, now, when things don't go smoothly and you have bugs, um, then it's going to be a little bit trickier to find out what's going on when we have these multiple processes going on. And, um, and so in this demo, I'm actually going to intentionally make a couple mistakes just to kind of show you what you might have to deal with and kind of how to reason about uh, bugs when we have different processes. So I have my pool as before. I'm doing the same thing where I'm downloading um, different URLs. And um, so I'm kind of doing the request.get, raise for status, r.text. Um, so I can grab one page there. And, um, and then down here, I'm, I'm kind of downloading all the pages from 0 to 17 uh, using four different threads. And that works great. I'm able to I'm sorry, I shouldn't say threads, four different processes. Um, I'm able to get all of those different uh, pages. Now, one thing that could go wrong is when I'm trying to fetch pages that don't exist. So let's say I try to make that uh, 20. Uh, there is no page 18 or 19. So this is going to fail. And, um, and see right away that we have this thing called a remote traceback. Uh, remote means that this traceback or this exception happened in a different process than the one I'm currently in. Right? Of course, right? Because I created this pool of separate processes and the process that started didn't have the exception. Uh, the other one, the other helper process that was doing the fetch had the exception. And so I actually get two, two exceptions here. First, I have this one, uh, which is telling me what? This is my raise for status. And, um, and so what happened is that this exception came from that helper process that was in, in the pool. That's a remote exception. But ultimately, if there's an exception in one of my helpers, that creates an exception uh, for me as well, right? So this is the exception in, in kind of my starting process, right? It happened um, in, in here, right? So, so an exception in the a remote exception in the in the helper will ultimately trickle back as a remote exception to me, and that's why I have these two different um, tracebacks, right? I have the one in the in the starting process, and and then kind of one in the remote the remote process. Okay, so let me put that back. That's one issue I can draw uh, that I can kind of run into. And um, maybe let me just print the length of the pages here so it's not so verbose. Um, that's an example of a runtime exception. Um, let, let's talk about a, a semantic error that you can kind of very easily uh, come across if you aren't, uh, aren't careful. This one's a little bit less intuitive. Um, right now this fetch function returns uh, the page, but you can imagine a different version of the fetch function that that does something like this. It tries to build up a, a dictionary of pages. And, um, and maybe it works like this. Uh, I have my key um, is the index, and then the value is the HTML for the page. And, um, and so per, perhaps instead of returning this, I'm just saying pages of index, right, right from here, equals r.txt from the response I got back. Right, so, so if I do this and I run this and I try to look at well, first off, let me just run it like this, right? This isn't returning anything anymore, but but it's putting something inside of that uh, that dictionary, right? And so it'd be a very natural way to write the code, uh, but it's not going to work. And um, and so let me let me run this down here, and, and we'll kind of see what happens. I'm going to reset this, and when I'm all done, I want to look at pages, and it turns out that uh, that pages, uh, well. You know what? I guess I shouldn't be doing this anymore, right? Because there is no return value. Let me run this. I, I run it, and um, and guess what? This was empty. Uh, why was it empty? I guess am I running this code? Am I putting anything inside of pages? Um, let, let's do this right after we put something in pages. Uh, let's print off what is inside of that pages, and um, and maybe I just want to see what the keys are. Right? I don't care about all the HTML. I just want to see what pages have been downloaded, right? I, I can see right here, I put it in there, but at the end, I don't have anything going on. So I'm going to kind of run this and, um, and it doesn't do anything different because I haven't redefined that. Let me, let me do this. And I see, okay, lots of different things are being put into that pages dictionary, but at the end, I still end up with something that's empty. Okay, this is getting very mysterious. Um, <clears throat> to really see what's going on, I have to kind of 
not just print things, but I don't have to know which process is doing the printing. And, um, and so if I import OS as I have here, uh, there's this nice call which is get PID, and that stands for get process ID. And I run that. I see, okay, this process I'm running is 17304. And when I'm dealing with multiple processes, as I am here, right, I have a pool of four helper processes, it's extremely useful to, uh, whenever I'm doing a print, to figure out, well, who is doing the printing, right? So a good debugging strategy when you're doing these kinds of things is to print off the process ID before you print, uh, print the data, right? So I'm going to do that. And, um, and, and when I'm all done, same thing down here, right? Uh, I actually have five processes in play. I have my initial process, then these four helpers. And, and so I wanna, I wanna look at both these things. I do this and, uh, and let me run this thing. And, um, and what I'm seeing is that there's five different process IDs, right? There's 304, which is what I had before. And then my helpers are, are 17506, 17508, 17509. And then you see that they just start to repeat, right? Um, since I only have four processes but 18 pages, um, they're, they're each kind of repeating, right? They're each doing multiple pieces of work. And uh, what I want you to notice here is that uh, even though in my code it feels like I have one of these things, as soon as I create this pool of four different threads, um, those four different I'm sorry, I keep calling them threads, those four different processes, those four processes are basically clones. Of, of kind of the initial process. And initially, right, this was empty. So the way I'm kind of starting off is I have these five processes, all of which have their own empty dictionary. And even though they start as clones, they can kind of uh, differentiate themselves later, right? So, so when I'm doing this, when I'm inserting this, this dictionary, this is uh, add to dictionary, uh, add to the pages dictionary, for this process, right? So it looks like I have one dictionary, but there's really five in play, right? I have the one for my starting uh, process and these other four. And, and that's why I see down here that um, if I look at the perspective of a single process ID, I'm like, okay, I add zero, and then I have zero and one, and then I have zero and one and eight. It's coherent from the perspective of any individual process, but I can see at the end, right, I have a few different going on, right? 1506 has, has these five, uh, 1508 has these other other ones, and um, and uh, I'm sorry, what would I say? The the five the 506 process has these, uh, the 508 process has these other ones, and the 304 process has has absolutely nothing, right? So the big lesson here is is this, and I'm just going to write it down since it's so important. Uh, with processes, avoid global variables because they're not shared. I mean, you can use them if you keep that in mind, right? They're not shared between processes. Each process has its own, okay? So it's much better to have kind of these local variables and then get information back by, by returning it.